once a time, a time long before man, when the skies belonged only to feathered creatures who soared and swooped and glided on mountain shadows, creatures who ruled the skies. There was a time when men could only dream of wings and flight and of the ever-thrilling freedom of the air. Eventually, a new time came to pass when man discovered that he too could join the great birds on their adventures into the atmosphere above. Man had discovered the ability to fly, and with it, a new world, never to be the same again. Vast, exciting, wonderful. But with that wonder came an awesome responsibility. Not by desire, but by the dictates of a war-torn world, man soon found that like the mighty hawk, the falcon, and the eagle, he would have to become a soldier in the sky. And so eventually came the concept of preserving peace through air power, and with it, the inevitable need for a new institution an institution to train and shape and develop fine young men and women into great aviators. Thus was born the United States Air Force Academy, a falcon its symbol of might governed by law and justice. Born to develop men and women who would one day leave footsteps in the sky. In 1954, a new Air Force Academy, on equal footing with the Army and Naval Academies, was signed into law. And so it began, the start of a new era. In 1955, the first class of just over 300 cadets entered an intense academy program, eventually graduating slightly more than 200 second lieutenants, pioneers and leaders of a new age, an age of fresh ideas, original thought, and progress. Academy takes pride in its brief history, a history of change, development, advancement. But the means for turning a cadet into an officer have changed little since those early years. Candidates for the Academy must still hurdle rigid entrance requirements. High school academic records, comprehensive college entrance exams, and participation in extracurricular activities are carefully examined. Most candidates must obtain a congressional appointment before they ever become part of the proud cadet wing. But if accepted, they become members in a distinguished group of cadets who hail from all 50 states. A truly diverse national character with one common vision. To earn a Bachelor of Science degree and the gold bars of a second lieutenant. But before these young candidates conquer any skies, they start with an academy experience very close to the earth. Military training is the first of four pillars of excellence which mold and shape a fledgling cadet's life. Here in basic training, cadets learn to follow, to sacrifice their own needs for the greater needs of the group, just as they may someday have to do in combat. Military training continues for the duration of a cadet's academy life.
Upper class cadets run their own wing with opportunities for advancement, responsibility, and leadership. This afternoon is at 12.55 hours. What time is Sir, I do not know. Why not? No excuse, sir. The engagements into the computer. Periodically, both sides will be getting updates on the results of the actual combat. Each week during the academic year, cadets receive several hours of professional military training. Right away, so we can expedite and get as many engagements as possible. These programs develop professional knowledge and leadership skills through a four-year building block curriculum, applied and practiced in the cadet wing. Your wave consists of 48 B-52s, divided up into 16 cells of three aircraft each. Core courses in professional military studies give cadets a knowledge of their profession. Absolutely no evasive maneuver. The profession of arms. If you had graduated just 16 years ago, there's a good chance that you would have had to endure a crew mission briefing like this. However, being a good academy graduate, I'm sure that you would have gathered your wits very quickly and begun to understand. Every summer, cadets participate in programs such as training other cadets, visiting operational bases both in the United States and abroad, or a number of other challenging opportunities designed to help them become future Air Force leaders. Another major ingredient of the military leadership pillar is the airmanship program. Each cadet has the opportunity to fly, parachute, navigate, and soar. Man and machine as one in symmetry together. It's not just the fun, it's the challenge, it's the experience. Yes, it's the, the fact that I have an airplane that I'm responsible for, that I'm responsible for the life of other people in that airplane. I can remember the first time I soloed is a real challenge for me. I find that people that I instruct now, I have to teach that same responsibility to. The leadership that I learned through teaching them this is going to be invaluable to me out in the Air Force serving my country. The future of air power is bound only by the imagination of those who guide its destinies. And so the Academy's second pillar of excellence lies in its academic program. Quenchalism is it may lead us to saying, therefore, so long as our end is good, so long as it's noble, any means whatsoever would be just... From its inception, the now, Academy has been recognized as one of the finest institutions of higher education in these United States. ...that the end justifies the means. Cadets must complete an extensive core curriculum of such subjects as basic sciences and engineering, as well as the arts, humanities, and the social sciences. Very with angle of attack for a delta wing plan form. From there, they, they may choose one of over 20 academic majors, each designed to give them insight and understanding. Degrees over the speed range from Mach point one to Mach point six. So that one day, they may have not only the knowledge, but also the wisdom to lead the free world's most powerful armed forces. Fiber optics bundle with light going in one end, going over... The Office of Faculty serves as a role model for cadets. Presently used in many civilian... All have advanced degrees, and many are themselves academy graduates. control and communications. Here's an actual chance... Some have had combat experience. ...experiences of your predecessors here at the Air Force Academy. Does it follow, even if that were correct? What these officers bring to the learning process is much more than knowledge. What they can and do impart to the cadets is an education in Air Force life. Act in our own self-interest? Is that what makes actions right? Combine these instructors with outstanding educational facilities, and the result is not only a continued series of Rhodes Scholars, Guggenheim Fellows, and other distinguished cadet accomplishments. The result is a total man or woman prepared to meet the intense and demanding challenges which lie ahead of each and every one of them. Men and women paradoxically trained in the conduct of war, yet dedicated above all to its prevention. General Douglas MacArthur once said, on the fields of friendly strife are sown the seeds that on other days and other fields will bear the fruits of victory. The Academy's athletic program is dedicated to the concept of leadership through teamwork and individual effort. It is the third of the Academy's pillars of excellence. 
All cadets must participate in not only a comprehensive physical education program, but an intramural or intercollegiate activity as well. Strength, coordination, agility, stamina, the will to win. All necessary ingredients in the very fiber of the air warrior. that the balance on which our civilization exists might one day depend on our character, spirit, and integrity to use our military strength wisely. And so they felt that an Air Force Academy must incorporate the concepts of religion, honor, and integrity into its schooling. Today, these early beliefs comprise the fourth and final pillar of academy excellence, character and spiritual development. Diverse selection of spiritual programs and ethics courses, cadets learn that nothing is more important to an individual's character than his or her ability to be trusted. Concern for character development has been an integral part of U.S. military academies since their earliest years. Values such as honesty and trust and subordination of self are critically unique to service to one's country. In the profession of arms, human lives depend on the integrity of others, especially those in command. The function of the honor code is to develop character and integrity in our future Air Force leaders. What do these four pillars of excellence, military training, academics, athletics, and spiritual and character development lead to? They lead to a young man or woman ready to take yet another giant step. Most academy graduates realize their dreams to fly at one of several Air Force undergraduate flying training bases. And while many academy graduates have become decorated combat pilots and navigators, not all will slip the surly bonds of Earth. Today, these other graduates will find themselves confronted with equally eminent challenges. This is the area right here that I'm really worried about, Jim, and this is the Engineers area Engineers designing new buildings with new ideas. When those simulators have a problem, say a fire or something. Maintenance officers providing safe airframes to the air crews who fly them. Go ahead and load up the sample. Scientists questioning why things operate the way they do. To astronauts in space discovering the why and asking new questions never dreamed of before. Most academy graduates go on to become career officers. But wherever they are, whatever they may be doing today, these graduates are leaders. Leaders prepared to meet the challenges of an ever-changing dynamic 21st century Air Force. In the long history of the world, only a few generations have been granted the role of defending freedom in its hour of maximum danger. The energy, the faith, the devotion which we bring to this endeavor will light our country and all who serve it 
and the glow from that fire can truly light the world. There was once a time, a time not so long ago, when the early pioneers of flight envisioned what is today. It is to them that the Air Force Academy looks back proudly. But it is to tomorrow's air pioneers and leaders, many of whom are cadets here today, that the Air Force entrusts its future. There is a time, and that time is near, when these men and women will seek not the twilight, but the dawn of our nation. And in so doing, their giant silhouettes will one day leave their own footsteps in the sky.